All righty. Uh, good to see everybody. Um, and good afternoon. Uh, one of our longest uh, season ticket holders passed away yesterday um, at 106, 106 years old, Don Savage. I just wanted to recognize him. Uh, my deepest sympathies to his family uh, and friends. Um, Don was the head usher at Queen, uh, Queen of All Saints for 50 years, uh, one of our most loyal Bears fans. So I just want to really just, uh, you know, it's just a special shout out to him and his family and just a, a really, uh, really cool thing. And then uh, worked in sales for 72 years. And then um, I got some more information from my, my, my PR guy here. He was a uh, 16-inch uh, softball. That's a big that's a big deal here in Chicago. Adam, you know that, right? All right, brother. And uh, Hall of Fame in 2014, right? So uh, just a shout out to him and his family. Deepest sympathies there. Uh, you know, the injury update, you know, DJ uh, was, was good. Practice today. We'll, you know, we'll see how we go the next 48 hours. And then also Jaquan. Jaquan also practiced today. And, and we'll see where that goes here. But uh, uh, looking, looking good, trending in the right direction. Uh, but we'll see. Um, I had a good week of practice. You know, uh, felt good about the practice. Again, we, you know, got guys freshened up on on Wednesday. You know, with that half and half practice, I thought that was really good. The guys, uh, you know, legs got back in. The you know the speeds and all that were really good, based on performance, um, staff, you know, uh, feedback. And then from there, really just uh, did our normal Thursday uh, first, second, third down, and then also did the red zone today and gold zone. Um, guys look quick and guys look uh, ready to go. So, uh, with that, open up to questions. That was, uh, was, did Brisker suffer that injury in practice Wednesday, or was that something that carried over from the game? On yeah, just a, it was a little bit in practice, you know, just some tightness there in the groin. Um, so, but, uh, so we wanted to rest him that one day, and we'll see where he goes. And uh, like I said, he was out there limited today, but uh, hopefully trending in the right direction. With the, the productivity surge the defense has had here in the last month, month and a half, what for you is the most significant, most notable through your eyes of what's happening and what is carrying on? Yeah, I would say you know most of it is really about the energy and the passion that you see. You know, because guy, when guys know what to do and know how to do it, you can feel the speed, uh, you can feel the 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 physicality, and uh, you can start to feel that. And uh, you know, the guys know what to do and know how to do it, um, and you can definitely feel that. You know, coming on, and a few of my mentors have, have texted me and talked to me and said, said they they see it too. You know, so that's always a good thing. And uh, but again, it's always it's always one one week at a time. You know, we got a big challenge ahead of us this Sunday, and and uh, it's it's going to be big for us, and uh, going to have to play one at a time, one play at a time. Yeah, I got a question about Eddie Jackson. When, when when you and Ryan came in here last year, and obviously you're evaluating, the, you know, the players you inherited. Um, why, why was Eddie a keeper? I mean, obviously he had some issues. You know, he had a contract. I mean, he's a veteran, whatever. But do you recall what the thought process was that made him a keeper for you in this defense? I would really look at him as just, uh, you know, just the experience was was one of our keys to that, and then really just, uh, you know, his communication, the way he's, he's played. You know, obviously had a he had a you know awesome year. And it was I think it was eighteen, right. you know, and then, you know, um, I visited with him when I first got here and talked to him about our standards and how we operate, and you know, him for for him to get in the best shape of his life, and he did that and he responded well to that. Um, but uh, the experience, the communication, the knowledge of football. Um, and then really the, he put his best foot forward in that first year. You know, he had four picks last year um, until he got injured, you know, later in the year. And, and we really uh, like where he was. How, what, how do you feel like in, in general? How, how is, has he met your expectations as far as what you, what you expected, you know, when you, when you made the decision? Then? Yeah, Eddie's been, Eddie's been great. You know, he, Eddie's been awesome in the room and he's been great with the young guys. And I think it was really beneficial, you know, last year, you know, our first year here, you know, for, you know, Gordon, you know, you know, for Brisker, you know, those young secondary pieces to be able to see a veteran, you know, operate that way. And then also, you know, this year added two more pieces to it. So, you know, with Tyreek and Spitty. So I think that's uh, always great to have that veteran presence in there. Matt, I know you're, in fact, you're a lot of players are, you know, complimenting you for how steady you've been throughout the you know, flow of the season. But winning also brings, you know, people feel better when you win football games, obviously. Have you sensed a different energy at all with your team after getting these back-to-back -back wins? Yeah, I mean, uh, the energy has always been good. The energy has been great, you know, and the guys – and I commend the guys for that. You know, they've always been able to reset, you know, and uh, it's just a little faster to reset when you have victory. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and fix your mind on the next opponent and fix your mind on fundamentals, fix your mind on your playmaking ability, what you're going to get done in the future. And that's always been our mantra. 
And, you know, it's just a little bit harder sometimes, you know, when you lose, you know, tough losses, you know, or, you know, in, in order like that, it's, it's always hard. But the guys, you know, the reason I always tell them that, hey, we brought you in here because you're tough minded guys and uh, you're able to handle adversity. And it's how we respond. We don't react to things uh, to vic victory or defeat. We respond to it. And we already have that set up in our mind of how we're going to respond. And how we do that is it's just flip the page. 24 hours, flip the page and move on to the next one. And how can I get better? How can my position group get better? And how can my unit get better? And what's my job in doing that, you know, uh, for the football team? And, you know, the football team always is, is the first and most important thing. Um, and then myself is, is second. And uh, the team always comes first. And that was that's always been our, our mantra. Matt, how do you evaluate Braxton's play this season, but especially since he came back from the neck injury? Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. You know, uh, Braxton, obviously, second-year player, you know, and when you have uh, a guy that's had that experience as a rookie, um, his biggest growth always comes in the second year. And we have had a lot of second-year players, of course, but um, he's one of them. And uh, he's starting to really, you know, get consistency as he goes through the week um, in terms of his preparation and also his play on Sunday. What about Jervon Dexter? Have, uh, he's been around the quarterback a lot the last couple of games. Have you seen growth from him throughout the season? I have, yeah, I have, and Pickens. You know, both guys inside are really starting to come on. Um, you can really feel their takeoff, their get off, the pad level, um, the length at which they play, and then obviously the hits on the quarterback, and and those are all starting to pick up. And uh, again, those are again first year players that we that we brought on, and again they'll 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 be better next year. You know, and it's important for those guys to get more reps and get experience. Um, you know, really learn from the veterans. You know, I love having Justin Jones in there, uh, Andrew Billings in there. Those guys are all, you know, wily veterans that have played the game a long time and understand power and leverage and, and how to get to the quarterback. So that's been good, too. Matt, for, for mid-December, the injury report is pretty clean. I'm just curious from a coaching standpoint, how does it feel when you know you don't have to do the whole next man up reshuffle and, and you just kind of go in with the opportunity to play full strength? It feels great in December, but just in general, honestly, because we've been doing that a lot, you know, even the beginning part of this year. You know, and last year too, and it's great to have continuity on the lines. You know, on the on the on the offensive line, we finally have continuity there, and also on the defensive line too, and uh, really throughout the whole football team. But yeah, that's it's been great. When, when you, we were back in training camp, I mean, you held a lot of guys out. Um, you know, was that for this reason? I mean, to to ensure that you, if you handle it that way in August, that maybe it'll look more like this in December with more availability. Um, I'm I'm under, unsure of the question. So like, I'm just thinking back to training. Camp. We held guys out. It seemed like you had a long list of guys out. Yeah. In well, they were injured. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we didn't hold them out. I mean, they were they, those guys were injured, and and uh, the training staff decides when they're when they're out. But it was unfortunate that they were out, but they were, and that you what you lose is consistency there. You know, you don't have the consistency of you know what Tremaine was out or Eddie was out or what whatever it was Brisker was also out. We had several other guys on offense out, right? Nate was out. And, but you don't have that consistency that you can build uh, during that time. And you got to find ways to figure it out, you know. So for us, it was the walkthroughs, get them in the ITC, get them out and do the walkthroughs and try to get continuity that way. And again, that's that's the best you could do. DJ has shown a willingness to play through pain. Sunday, the ankle, just taking yeah. big licks this season. What kind of example does that set? Yeah, you know, it's your best players, right, have to be your hardest workers, but they got to be the toughest too. And uh, that's that's what he is, and he is a tough son of a gun, and uh, and uh, you know he's got everything you want from a leader, and he doesn't have to say much, and when he talks, everybody listens, and uh, it's uh, it's really good to have him. Matt, what have you what have you learned to appreciate about Darnell Mooney over the past two years, and why when you guys watch the film, have you not been able to get him consistently going as as he did in twenty? Yeah, you know we we've always tried to get him going, you know, and we're going to, you know, it was what seven targets last week. We're just gonna, you know, continue to target and continue to get him involved uh, various ways in the offense. We, you know, obviously love his explosiveness, his ability to get down the field, you know, his run after the catch. You know, he's exhibited that, you know, uh, several times. I think back to the New Orleans game, uh, that was certainly really stellar in that game. Uh, but, you know, more importantly, his attitude. You know, when a guy has an injury like he had last year, and then the, the rehab. And to be able to stay positive and then come back from that, um, you know, and be in full goal, it uh, says a lot about his character. And uh, he's a heck of a teammate and, uh, and a really good person. Matt, think, Matt, on the topic of DJ, going back to his touchdown catch last week, mm -hmm. he was saying after the game, you know, when that when that flag is thrown and, and he and Justin know it's a free play, that they just kind of have that connection. They knew what to do. How have you seen 
connection grow through the season and get to that point between Justin and DJ? Yeah, and I think I said it way back when they when he first got here with DJ that that was pretty immediate. You know, they they had dinner together, went to the, they went to the basketball game together. They, it was immediate connection between those guys, and and even on the field, it was it was immediate. And uh, the connection, the chemistry seemed to go really good at first. And uh, it's continuing to do that, you know. So they're always talking about routes and route discipline and where you're going to be. And uh, DJ's really good at being where he's supposed to be when he's supposed to be there. And uh, Justin can feel that and the connection. And he makes some wild plays too. You know, he makes plays in traffic and catches. And then the the contact balance and running after the catch. And I mean, I'd throw it to a guy for five yards and have him bust it for seventy or six, you know five or ten. That's pretty pretty good for a quarterback, right? To, uh, so he's done a lot of that too. So. I think it's been good all along. Man, it looks like Amari Cooper's going to suit up this weekend. What kind of challenges does he present for all the throwing the ball? Yeah, first round pick. I mean, he's a, he's got talent. He's got that talent, and he can take the top off. And he's a really good route runner, uh, very disciplined, and uh, you know he's he's a, he's a very good talent. You know, so and he's got the quarterback that can get him the ball. You know, so the quarterback's very accurate. Um, they do a really good job on the back shoulders, uh, getting the ball over the top, uh, and he runs good routes. All right. Thank you, man. Thank you, sir.